Hey guys, welcome back to Jessen Reads Romance. I'm Jessen and today I have a very special video. But you will notice that I totally forgot to film an intro for this video, this Q&A 4K celebration, and I'm filming this video now, the next day. Because I'm currently editing the video footage, this is going to be a very long video and I apologize. I tried to redo this video to make it shorter and it pretty much stayed the same. There's a lot of questions to be answered. I was juggling doing my makeup plus answering questions and so I'd stop doing my makeup and just continue to talk. So that's why it's so long, but I had a lot of fun making it. I'm not like a makeup artist or anything. I don't have like special tricks or tips or like crazy unheard of makeup that I'm using, but it was just like a fun casual video to celebrate hitting 4K on YouTube. It is absolutely amazing. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. I hope that you enjoy this for just like the fun casual video that it is. I hope I got to everyone's questions. I'm pretty sure that I did, but if I didn't, I apologize. I'm so sorry. Be prepared to get very close up and personal with my face in like three, two, one. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I already put moisturizer on my face and also I did, um, my what is this called primer <laughs> i did primer um, this is actually the second time that i filmed this video and i decided to put contacts in if you've watched my any video on my channel before then you know that i always wear glasses i haven't worn contacts since september 2019 <laughs> at my friend's wedding um but the first time that i tried to film this video without contacts and i couldn't check and make sure that I was in focus or that anything I was holding up it was, was in focus on my camera. It was so hard. So I'm like, I'm, I have to do contacts. Also, it's kind of nice wearing contacts when you film videos because you don't have to worry about lighting. I always have a glare in my glasses. I can't help it. I have really big windows, but this is like the best lighting situation for me, like natural light. But also I have a ring light, but it's nice because I don't have to worry about it actually reflecting. I could just have it like straight up in my face, which is nice anyway. Now that that random chit chat was over, let's start with our questions. So the first question is from Paige and she says, when are you gonna get back to Pam Godwin's Deliver series? Devastate and Take are so amazing. Now for dark romance like Pam Godwin's Deliver series, um, I binged the first three or four. I can't even remember, I need to go check, but I have to be in the mood page to read that and um, I haven't been in the mood to go back to something like that but I do plan on listening to the audio now all nine books are out on audio and there's packs of three that you can get on audio which is cheaper than just getting every single audiobook by itself which I like and I do plan on going back to that series but I honestly can't tell you when just whenever the mood strikes or whenever Jen pressures me because she did mention that the other day, honestly. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. Maybe sooner rather than later. Also, I'm doing my foundation right now, which I do the MAC Studio Fix Fluid um, Foundation. Funnily enough, um, MAC was a huge brand whenever I was in high school, way back when, um, <laughs> more than like, well, 12 to 15 years ago. And, um, but everybody used this like really thick moussey foundation and it looked cakey. And so like Mac, um, kind of got a reputation, at least in my school being like, if you want to put pounds of makeup on, you use Mac and it was like too overdone and everybody like went away from Mac. But now I'm back. I've been using Mac for Mac again for like five years now. And also I have sensitive skin. So you're going to see a lot of the same brands in this video. This is an ex an exciting makeup video i don't have like tips and tricks like i yeah no I, it's not interesting i just am giving the people what they want which is to see how i do my makeup and yeah also i'm pretty white um <laughs> so my shades in these are so or, or like one of the lightest that you can go i think there's maybe like one or two lighter than the foundation that i use and the concealer that i use this is shade in W13, my um, foundation. I'm also trying out this brand. I think it might be a little too drying though. This is the shade 30, which I like the shade a lot. And it was really cool getting matched and it like actually really matched me. Um, I also put foundation on my neck. If I wear foundation, sometimes I don't wear foundation. It just depends. But today we're gonna go full face because I have a lot of questions to answer. And um, as you can see, I go off on tangents. So we're gonna drag out the makeup a little bit longer. 
Next question. I'm just Christina. Have you read How to Marry Marquis? Yep, I sure have. And I actually have a book review, so I'm going to link that video up here or up here, wherever it pops up. It's going to be above my head. So I did read it. I liked it. It was one of my random picks for um, historical romance for the month. I can't remember if it was February or March, but I did. I did read it. The next question is from Tara. Um, Tara also has a really cool podcast, Read My Lips, and I was on it for Dark Romance, if you like Dark Romance, but she asks, how has reading changed since starting BookTube? Um, before I start answering this question, before I forget, because I'm notorious, my concealer is MAC Pro Longwear Concealer in the shade NW15. So, my reading has, and if I'm looking over here, it's because I have a mirror over here, which is easier than looking here. But I guess I can like get up right in the camera and do this. Anyway, so my reading has changed because booktube friends, definitely. Um, I kind of get FOMO. If I see a lot of people reading a book, and I'm not just talking about like the really hyped books that everybody wants to read for the year, just the random series. Like I love the random indies that booktubers find and they talk about it. I'm like, I want to read those series. So it definitely affects me. Um, Crystal recently kicked off the main lane series reading um sprint that we all did it was just kind of like an informal thing that happened crystal was reading it and then i was like oh i only read the first three books i need to jump back in that series so i started reading that one um so it just kind of like happens naturally whenever you have like a lot of people to talk to and see what they're reading so joining booktube has given me access to a lot more people's recommendations also on the podcast I had a lot of people um, give me recommendations, especially on Patreon as well, because we do a monthly thing. And recently, someone had suggested for our new adult contemporary um, pick of the month, someone had suggested Sophie Lark. And that's how I started reading Sophie Lark. So yeah, recommendations. And also Jen from the Book Refuge is always in my ear, but she reads like 400 books a year, which is insane. <laughs> she reads so many books a year. And she and Tiffany always outpace me. They start a series, I'm like reading book one, they're like, I'm on book five. I'm like, I can't read that fast, guys. I cannot. I can read a lot of books, but just not that much. So it's Jen's fault, basically. Next from Blade War. If you were a protagonist of a book, what romance subgenre would the book belong to? And what would your blurb in your storyline be? Um, I'm glad I'm redoing this video because I actually had time to think about it, but definitely piano or, or urban fantasy no contemporaries for me. But anyway, um, I would be what I am currently right now because that's what, that's what I imagine. I'm a bookkeeper, so I'd be a bookkeeper. And of course they have supernatural beings, but then something would happen where I would get like pulled in to like shifter politics because of course I'd be with a werewolf, 100%, no doubt, or a shifter, some exciting shifter. That would be my hero and, um, yeah, I don't know what, what shenanigans would go down because I'm not a writer, I'm a reader. That would be what my book would be. Also, I did not clean any of this for y'all, so so sorry. This is the MAC Studio Fix, what is this? Mineralized Skin Finish Natural in Light Plus. And I only kind of do underneath my eyes because that's where I'm oily and I'm not oily here and I don't want to be too dry but sometimes I only wear this and I will put it all over my face if I don't have foundation I will use this and just put it all over my face if I want to be simple which a lot of the times I'm actually really simple in my videos this is from Tiffany speak of the devil um, what book world would you love to live in Psy changeling world Psy changeling world I didn't even have to think hard about this question. I love the side changeling world. I would love to be with a changeling. I love the books about changelings. If it's a sci sci pairing, it kind of does not interest me. So I would want to be with somebody in the snow dancer territory. Now I'm gonna do some bronzer. This is the Milani. I'm like so ashamed to show y'all my makeup because it's not clean at all. This is the Milani. Um, bronzer in sunlight number one um, and I just do a little bit of bronzer because since I'm so white and since this foundation really kind of like 
makes my face just very one note. I do do some bronzer and honestly on the camera it looks a lot lighter which if I'm doing makeup specifically for videos I will go heavier than what I normally do because I want it to show up on camera and not just like blur me out with all the natural light and especially it's pretty bright this morning so I'm looking pretty pretty white and this is what I do next question from Maya how old are you? I'm 28. I'm 28. I'm going to be 29 in September. I'm close to 30. <laughs> anyway, next from Tiffany again, who are the heroines you see yourself in? Honestly, it's the quieter ones. And, um, if you watched my historical romance book tag video, which I'll link up here, I mentioned a lot of like my favorite heroines in historical romance. And I was like, they were all like Lisa Clavis heroines, but the common denominator was that they were the quieter ones. They were the quieter, unassuming little wallflowers that are pretty simple. So Evie, Helen, and Cassandra, love them. Love them so much. I also really love Merit from Devil in Disguise, which is going to be her new release. Also, in case you guys didn't know, in Don't Hex and Drive by Juliet Cross, my aunt, the heroine Isadora, her personality is based on my personality. Um, Juliet actually asked for feedback for somebody who's introverted and has social anxiety. So if you want to honestly read somebody like with my personality that I know for sure, I'm like, yeah, that's stuff that I would do. It's Isadora from Don't Hex and Drive. She's me, except I don't have a Bollywood um, vampire boyfriend, which I really wish I would. From Paige, what did you think of the new Mortal Kombat movie? Now, we talked about it on the podcast. I'm not sure if regular chit chat during an episode or behind the scenes on Patreon, but um, I used to play Mortal Kombat whenever I was very young on Sega. And that's the extent of my knowledge of Mortal Kombat. I don't know the lore, don't look at me for that. But I really love, like the first 10 minutes of that movie was amazing. And I was like, whoa, are, are we gonna get like a serious Mortal Kombat movie? Something that's like really good and like not cheesy? And then the tone changes and honestly we start following characters that I really didn't care about. Like Hanzo and Sub-Zero, their story, whenever they were on the screen, they stole, they stole the scenes. Um, my other favorite character for the movie was Kano. He was the only one that I felt like understood the assignment, honestly. It was not just kind of like reading his lines and being like, I'm in a cheesy movie, so I'm just going to read these lines. Like, he was going balls to the walls and he was crazy and I loved it. So Kano was amazing. Next, from That Girl FSM, do you have any inside scoop for Witches Get Stitches asking for a friend? Um, so we get the history between Nico and Violet. Nico and Violet have kind of been circling each other for a couple of books now, and you can tell that they have a history, so we definitely get the history for them. I mean, it is their romance. It'd be disappointing if you don't. I'm doing my blush now. One of the blushes that I'm gonna be using is, <gasps> shocker, MAC, and it's in the shade Mocha, so. So this is what it looks like, kind of like a dusty focus, kind of like dusty rosy. Did you see how dirty my brush was? Don't, don't judge. Anyway, so what was the question again? Oh yeah, Violet and Nico. Um, and also I will say that Alpha is going to be in the book more than he was in Don't Hex and Drive. I know a lot of people like Alpha from Wolf Gone Wild, which he's such an interesting character, um, especially since he still is living peaceably with Mateo in his head. You definitely get some interesting alpha scenes for this book. So that's my inside scoop for Witches Get Stitches. Now, I also use a second blush. Like I use the darker, just kind of more ready blush um, on like by my cheekbones and stuff. And then I use a lighter blush like on my the apples on my cheek because I just like it now. I used to not. I do makeup differently all the time. But right now I'm using Benefit's Dandelion. But um, before I was using Melania, oh my god, Milani, Dolce Pink, number one, and it's a very pink, has some like gold sparkles in it, which I don't normally like sparkly stuff, but um, I like that one. Now the dandelion blush looks really light, but honestly it shows up on my skin because I'm so damn white. So this... This is the dandelion blush. It's honestly looks a lot darker 
the angle that it's on. <laughs> I'm a terrible makeup uh, person, but anyway. Lupita Montoya, what do your days look like and how much time of the day do you read? Well, I wake up at six. No. I wake up and I do drink my coffee. I go to work, I work from home, and I'm able to listen to audiobooks. Audiobooks are a huge lifesaver for reading more. During the day, I would not be able to read the amount that I'm currently reading while I'm working and I'm in school if I did not listen to audiobooks. So audiobooks during the day while I'm working, but what you have to understand is that my Kindle is as attached to myself, my person, as people are with their phones. So I'm not reading, I'm actually listening to an audiobook right now. Not like while I'm doing makeup, but I'm currently in the middle of an audiobook and I don't normally tend to have like multiple books open at the same time. I like to read one book, finish it, and then be done with it and move on. But my Kindle's right here. It just comes with me everywhere. I'm walking, my Kindle's in my hand. It's just like a phone. Going from one room to the next room and I don't plan on reading, it's still with me because what if I have five minutes to spare? It's in my lap in the car because if I'm in the middle of traffic, I will pop this bad boy up and I will start reading. Like I just read every second that I can. I'm cooking. I got this origami case because sometimes I need to both hands to do stuff and I need my Kindle to like sit up by itself like this. So I got the origami case so it could stand like that and I can be hands free and read all the time. So yeah, I just read all the time. That's my answer. We've had like a lot of rain. Oh, I also go back with my little uh, regular powder brush and I just kind of go over it that way if it's like too much. I can just tone it down just a little bit like that. Also, another thing about listening to audiobooks, I got Bluetooth earbuds and I started taking them with me. I started putting them in my purse because of course I listen to it in the car. I connect it um, to my car while I'm driving, but if I go shopping, if I'm grocery shopping, I decided to start taking my headphones with me, my earbuds, so that I could listen to it while I'm grocery shopping. That's how often I read. Okay, next question from I'm Just Christina. How do you do your podcast? Which program do you use? So I have a MacBook Air, and the MacBook Air comes with some free programs or you can download them for free, and I've always used GarageBand. I know that there's another um, program if you're using a regular PC computer that you can download for free. I don't know how to work any of that, but honestly, I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I'm like, how do you use GarageBand to do a podcast? I watched those YouTube videos and I just copied what they did. I also watch a lot of YouTube videos for just like how to podcast, period. Just what do I need? What is the equipment that I need? What websites do I need to be using because you need to have a server to upload your episodes to? I personally use Buzzsprout, but there's so many other programs that you can use. And that's about it. You need a computer, a program to record it on, and a microphone, and I use Blue Yeti. From Adipaz5, if you had to pick a favorite book, which one? Do you know how many favorites I have? Okay, on my Kindle, I have collections. All my books are separated into collections. I just realized that I like stopped doing my makeup right now because now I'm talking books. I will continue after I answer this question, but I have like, I wrote down the number, 259 books in my favorites category. So this is honestly really hard, but you might be hearing a lot of the same books because they're my favorites. So the Grip Trilogy by um, Kennedy Ryan, Ravnall series. If I had to pick a series by Lisa Kleypas, it's gonna be the Ravnalls, especially with the new edition. Psy Changeling series by Nalini Singh. It's one of my favorite. Paranormal Urban Fantasy, love it. Hidden Legacy is the more accessible series by Alona Andrews, but I also like the Kate Daniel series. I think that it was it's the most complete series that I've ever read. I love the way it ended. Like I'm blown away by book 10, the ending of Kate Daniels. It was amazing. Similar question from Amy, favorite historical romance book? It's a Lisa Clapis book, surprise. Current favorite is Devil in Disguise, but all time, Devil in Winter. I have to give it to Sebastian St. Vincent. He is amazing and he definitely deserves my loyalty and love. Okay, now I'm gonna do my eyebrows. Funny story, I usually use like a brow pencil. I ran out of my um, brow pencil, but I have this palette. I have this, the Jaclyn Hill palette by Morphe. Ooh, ring light, hello. The Jaclyn Hill palette by Morphe. 
Is that? Nope, that's too shiny. Um, they have a lot of dark colors in here. Again, with the really dirty palette, I'm sorry guys. But have a lot of dark colors and I decided to use these dark colors. So these two right here, this one and this one, it is Soda Pop and Chip. I mix these two browns right here, dark, 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 and that's what I use for my eyebrows to go over them. I like my brows to be a little bit more defined. So I just kind of tap into both of them, tap on here, and let me get this other Morphe palette that I'll be using in a second so that I can get a little bit up close and personal. But anyway, I guess I can answer the next question while I do this. Um, Lizzie reads, Le Lacey reads top five books of 2021 thus far. Well, um, I actually do like a top wrap up at the end of the year and this might change. I'm definitely going to give you five books, but at the end of the year, these books might not be the same. I will say that definitely two of these books are probably going to end up on the list at the end of the year. And that's Devil in Disguise by Lisa Kleypas. It was phenomenal, I loved it. It's going in my all time favorites. And The Intimacy Experiment by Rosie Dannon. Those are two that I know, if they get kicked off the list, I'd be so surprised. I'd be so surprised if they would get kicked off the list. Cause those are two books that just kind of like stuck with me. But let's see, what else did I um, put on the list? Blood Air by Alona Andrews, which is her spinoff from the Kate Daniel series. Um, Broken Vow by Sophie Lark. I really love that one. And Sweet Ruin by Cressley Cole. I recently completed my read of the Immortals After Dark series for the very first time. So it was my first time reading Sweet Ruin and it was amazing. It was amazing. All right, next from Paige again. Paige has like amazing questions. What book or series do you most want to see get adapted into movie or TV show? Now, this is like if the studio had like an unlimited budget. These are the things that I would love to see made for TV. Something that was, you know, peak Game of Thrones, that kind of quality. That's what I'd want. So Side Changeling, are we surprised? No. Kate Daniels, because she's such a badass and I love this world and it's such a good urban fantasy series. Um, all of the Lisa Kleypas worlds that are interconnected, which is like, I know that the Gamblers of Craven, I believe somebody shows up in the Hathaway series or the Wallflower series, but I want Wallflowers, Hathaways, and Rathnels all together. Like just continue to make these, continue to make these. The Charlie Davidson series, I really like the concept of Charlie Davidson series. I don't talk about it often because I technically don't like the way that that series ended, but I love it. Son of Satan, girl who sees ghosts. She is a grim reaper. I freaking love that concept. And the Winston brothers. I love Penny Reed's Winston brothers. I would love to see these hooligans on TV. Also, before I get into my eyeshadow, Nalika said, no question, just a request. Please have more MM podcast episodes. Look, I'm picky when it comes to MM and we don't feature any episodes on the podcast that we don't rate four or five stars. It's all like positive reviews, so if it's not showing up, I probably gave it a three star, but I do. I do need to put more MM episodes in the podcast, but I tend to gravitate towards certain authors because I like how they write MM, and I don't want every single male male romance that we feature on the podcast to be by the same author. I feel like we need to feature some different authors. And then we can circle back around to our favorite author again once we've given other authors some spotlight. Okay, so now I'm gonna start doing my eyeshadow. This is another Morphe palette. This is a little Morphe palette and it is the 18T. There are two shades in this palette that I use no matter what. I'm always using these shades for every single eye makeup look that I do because I start off with the shades. So they have like the little thing with the names on it and I forget them. So the shades I'm gonna be using are Genuine and Expose. I like combining shades of everything in case you haven't noticed. So this one where I have hit pan and this one, I mix those two. Well, I can use this, <laughs> this one and this one. So I mix those two and that's like the base of all eyeshadow looks that I do. 
and a lot of times I just do this. I just do this on my crease and put on some eyeliner and some mascara and call it a day and that's my makeup look, which works for me. Um, they're also pretty light because I am a pasty pale girl and it doesn't take much to make a contrast when it comes to eyeshadows, but this is always, always, always my base. And if I'm going to do like an elaborate, not simple look, makeup look, then I combine different shades of eyeshadow. I never just put on one shade of eyeshadow. It's gonna be a lot. So the most time that I'll ever spend on my makeup, it's, it's eyeshadow. Eyeshadow always takes the longest for me if I'm like, not just doing this one shade. I just like went really quiet and just like kept doing this like for the longest time. I'll stay here and I'll blend my eyeshadow for forever. I would take a lot longer on eyeshadow than anything. I've said that five times. Okay, next from Paige again. What or is there a storyline that you really wanna read but you haven't found yet? So I'm not saying that these stories have not been written, but the books that I would consider five stars in these categories, yeah, I'm still looking for more of them. I want more and want piles and piles and piles of books that I would consider five stars in these categories. More really involves single dads. I love a single dad romance so much. I love to see dads actually like involved with their child's life. Like not just like, oh, I'm a dad. And like, oh, this child is acting out. Like I like, seeing them involved with their kids, involved with their activities, doing things, special things with their kids, just like going eat out with them, cooking for them, interacting with kids. If you're gonna put kids in your book, make them actual characters and not just props. That's my thing. Friends to Lovers trope, that is not a slow burn. I love Friends to Lovers tropes, but I want to feel like these two characters have chemistry already because if you're gonna be friends, then show me that they're actually friends and they know each other. But I don't want it to be a slow burn. I don't want them to finally realize at the very end of the book, oh wait, my best friend's the love of my life? Like, yeah, I want to see the fucking romance. I want there to be sexy times. I want it to be like, why have we not been fucking this whole time? That's what I want. And friends to lovers are just not giving it to me. Like, I want it so bad. Like, Him by Serena Bowen. That book was hot. Beautiful. There was so much sexual tension. I loved it. It was spicy and I liked it. Motorcycle romances that are not San Sons of Anarchy knockoffs. My biggest pet peeve with motorcycle romances is they're all like Sons of Anarchy. They talk like Sons of Anarchy. The characters are like exactly like Jax Teller. They use the exact same phrases and I get it. Like motorcycle, like lifestyle. There's some very similar aspects no matter what club or state you're in, but Jesus, make it your own. <laughs> Please make it your own. I just read a book, Kings of Kearney by Navessa Allen, and it was so different. And I loved it for that, loved it. So much different storylines. There's lots of similar aspects still, still motorcycle-y. And like the thing is, motorcycle romances should be my jam. I love tattooed, sexy alphas. And I'm just like, why doesn't it do for me? Because I read this story 5,000 times. I don't like a new one, please. Okay, rant over. Next question. Who are your go-to authors? You will not be surprised to see some very similar authors to questions I've answered before. Lisa Kleypas, Nalini Singh, Alona Andrews, Kennedy Ryan. These are go-to authors. I have tons of other authors who I really love and enjoy, but these authors I go back to again and again and again. If they have a new release, I'm like, what is this new release? I need it, I need it. And also I've been reading these authors for a fairly long time. So they're kind of like, I don't wanna say they proved themselves to me, but they have that longevity for me those authors do. Next question. Tara asks, favorite BIPOC authors who write historical fiction? I'm assuming you mean historical romance because I only read romance, but um, the truth is I need more suggestions for BIPOC authors who write historical romance. And I'm not saying they're not out there. I just need more direction suggestions. The BIPOC authors that I read mostly write contemporary romance. So one of my favorites is Stacey Reed. I love Stacey Reed's My Darling Duke. It was something that I discovered. It was recommended to me um, through Instagram by a listener. And she's like, I think you should, would love My Darling Duke. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling and Stacey Reed's amazing. You should check her out. Read it, fell in love. Still need to read a lot of her backlist, but she's my favorite. I haven't read enough Beverly Jenkins to be like, oh, I really like her. Like her books have been four stars 
fine and I like her, but I still need to read more, which I'm gonna read Indigo soon and I heard that that was like her best one, so I'm excited about that. I haven't read a lot of Courtney Milan. I read like two books by Courtney Milan. I read like one book by Vanessa Riley, which was not my jam. And then I've only read Alyssa Cole's Royal series. I haven't read any of her, her historical series, so maybe I should pick those up. So I don't have great suggestions for this question. And if you or anybody watching this video right now have some suggestions, please leave them in the comments so that I can go check them out. So ZZ Land asks, do you receive many ARCs from publishing houses? Any good ones to recommend? Love the show, by the way. Thank you, thank you so much. I do get eARCs. I get eARCs from NetGalley, from like your typical publishing houses like Avon, Penguin, Berkeley, William Morrow, all that stuff. And I can count on one hand the amount of actual physical books that were sent to me. Um, I'll get contacted through email and be like, would you like to read this? Would you like a physical copy? And I'm like, of course I would. Please send that to me. But those are few and far between, like I said. I don't like the feeling of having 10 arcs a month that I have to read because it feels like homework instead of something fun. So I tend, especially this year, to be more picky when it comes to my arc requests. I just won't request books. And then I do get a lot of people that email me asking me to read an arc of their book and I just won't do it. Not because I don't want to give like people a try, but I read the blurb and I'm like, this doesn't sound like it's for me. So I'm just, I'm not going to accept it. It's like, why would you not do that? It's a free book. I don't ever want to get into a reading slump because I'm forcing myself to read books that I don't like because they're just free. So I'm more specific, but the arcs that I have read, I went go look at Nick Alley for this, that I really liked was um, the X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. I really liked that one. It was a radio romance, enemies to lovers romance. Love It First from Kate Claiborne. I thought that that was really good. Um, Scoundrel of My Heart by Lorraine Heath. I'm so excited about this series. I do have the second book. I have the arc for the second book as well, which I'm, I want to read it like right now. The Intimacy Experiment by Rosie Dannon. Again, I've read, I've mentioned this a thousand times. And Devil in Disguise by Lisa Kleypas. Those were phenomenal arcs that I've read. Let's move on. Let's do some more makeup. <laughs> I, I think that this palette may be discontinued. I think it may be, have been a special Valentine's Day palette, but this is the 35XO Morphe palette, and it's very pink and purple, which I personally like for myself. I like pinks and purples on my face, so a lot of my eyeshadow tends to lean toward that color palette, and as you can see, wow, it's like a Valentine <laughs> in a palette, and I love it, I love it so much. So I'm gonna be using the shades um, Message Red and hard to get and it's like oh my god that's so similar to the other um color that you just did before in the other morphe palette yes yes it is this is how i work let's see so mixing this one and mixing this one okay let's pair this with the question from blade warrior you're one of my favorite booktubers ever that's so sweet love your content if you could choose any character to be your real life love interest who would it be i love this question because there's so many book heroes that i would love for them to be my real love life interest um either the kincaid brothers from the side changeling series riley they're totally different too riley is kind of like the more a stick in the mud it's actually kind of what mercy calls him because she's the more playful one and he's the more serious stoic alpha but he has a playful side mercy brings out that playful side which makes me really love him but honestly i'd probably pair better in real life with drew who is a playful person and he is paired with somebody who is more serious who's a little bit more standoffish type a type personality which is kind of like me so I'd probably pair better with Drew, who's kind of like the jokester. Oh, and those books are Branded by Fire and Play of Passion. Then Connor Rogan. Who would not want to be in love with Connor Mad Rogan? I would love him. He's so hot. I love him. This is from um, Elona Andrews' Hidden Legacy series. I love him. First three books are about Connor in Nevada. Then Torin Grace from Torn by Carrie and Cole. This is a tattooed guitar playing, singing, pet rescuer, animal rescuer. I love him. And this is an age gap romance, so older man than me. I would totally marry Torin. Torin Grace is probably actually my husband and I just haven't met him yet. Um, and St. Vincent. I'd pair well with St. Vincent. He's the type of personality, like I said, I really like Evie. I'm pretty quiet like Evie, so I feel like I can pair well with a St. Vincent personality. I feel like I can handle him. 
I do. I feel like I can handle them. Guys, y'all are gonna get so bored with my answers because I tend to talk about the same characters because I have the same favorites. Um, and yeah, yeah. It's just something that I know about myself. So the next question, I just looked down, but I forgot who asked it, is who are your favorite bookish villains? Sebastian St. Vincent. How many times have I said his name during this video? It's so good because his personality was developed in um, the book before his own romance. And he was, he was the villain. And I feel like Lisa Kleypas did a really good job making him sympathetic and paired him with the right person to take him on. I thought it was brilliantly done. Hugh from Iron Magic by Alona Andrews. This is a spinoff from her Kate Daniel series. And when I say Hugh was a villain, I mean I hated his guts. When Alona Andrews, the writing couple duo, announced that they were going to do a spinoff for Hugh, I was like, why would you do that? I hate him. I want him to die. Like, I want him to burn and die. Like, I was very much against Hugh D'Ambry, and um, I really liked him. I really liked his romance, I think. The lesson learned is don't doubt Alona Andrews if they want to redeem a villain, because they can. And um, it was amazing. Um, next one, Harry Rutledge. Another Lisa Kleypas hero from Tempt Me at Twilight. Some people don't like Harry. I like him. Raymo Falcone from Twisted Loyalties. This dude is crazy. He's a little bit fucked up and I really like him. Carter Mahoney from Untouchable. Don't recommend him to a lot of people. Don't go pick up this book if you're not into dark romance. Don't blame it on me. I'm telling you, you ask bookish villains, he's totally a villain. And if that's not your cup of tea, do not read him. I'm serious. I don't want to get blamed. I don't want to get blamed for people picking up this book and be like, why the hell did you say he was like a favorite? He's a favorite villain, guys. It's very relaxing. This motion, this eyeshadow motion, I think that that's why I spend so much time on my eyeshadow when I'm doing something more dramatic than those first two. It's just like, I kind of go into a trance and I just keep doing that. Okay, so next question. Oh. <laughs> Your eyeglasses, where are they from? Currently, I'm not wearing any, but um, I normally wear glasses for my videos and they're probably all dirty again, forgive me. I get a lot of people asking me questions about what glasses I use. These are the ones that I personally really like, the plain um, square frames. I'm not gonna open my eyes and put it because it's gonna be like, oh my God, I'm gonna, I lie. It's gonna look weird if I just close my eyes, but these frames, oh my God, everything's blurry. These frames are one of my favorites. And I got these from, Glasses USA. Got these from Glasses USA. I think these are the only ones from Glasses USA that I have. The rest of the glasses that I wear are from I Buy Direct. Those are the glasses that I feature a lot. These particular ones are some that every time I wear them, people make a comment in my videos saying, I love your glasses, which I'm like, oh, thanks. These babies, these gold framed with some pink and them cat eye looking glasses. Oh my God, it's so blurry, but um, I love these glasses. They were like out of my comfort zone when I purchased them, but they're really big hit. And whenever I'm feeling fancy, I wear them. I also have two pairs from I Buy Direct that are the exact same in different colors. Um, I normally don't wear these anymore. These pink ones, I kind of forgot about them because they kind of blend in with my face. So I just don't normally wear them. Um, because I decided to buy the blue ones and these, I wear these glasses most frequently. These blue ones by I Buy Direct, you can probably see me wearing these in the majority of my videos or at least the majority of my um, vlogs, I'll be wearing the blue ones because they're the most comfortable to wear. Next, favorite TV shows. I just haven't watched a lot of TV in the past couple years. I used to be huge into TV. Um, but nothing currently right now is honestly my favorite, but I'm gonna list all the TV shows that I really loved. Downton Abbey, I love dramas. You're gonna see a lot of like historical dramas or just dramas in general. Game of Thrones, we're not counting the last two seasons. I'm one of those people. Um, Game of Thrones was my life for the longest time and I was very disappointed, but it doesn't change the fact that Game of Thrones, the first few seasons were like the best TV ever. The Crown, love it. A lot of people don't like The Crown because they think it's slow, but I freaking love that. Dark, this is a German um, Netflix series and I, 
you have to like reading subtitles if you want to watch it, but it is so freaking cool. If you haven't watched Dark, it is amazing. I love it. The OA, which was canceled by Netflix. <sighs> it's amazing. I freaking love it. It's weird. It's out there. I don't care. I freaking love the OA. The Witcher. Yes, absolutely love it. It's definitely filling my Game of Thrones void. It's not the same thing, but that's the void that it's filling. Um, the Last Kingdom. Oh my God, Uhtred Babenberg. I love him. Love him so much. Mindhunter, which was also canceled, which possibly might be coming back to Netflix. I love it. I also really love Criminal Minds. Like that's one of the TV shows that I'll kind of constantly have playing in the background if I, I love background noise while I'm reading. So I will put on a favorite series like Grey's Anatomy or Criminal Minds or whatever on in the background or The Crown. The Crown is a frequent one that's in the background. All of the Marvel Netflix series are top notch. I'm so sad that they're no longer going to be any more seasons for these, but like Daredevil, one of the best TV shows. I love Daredevil. Aha, I, was, I knew this question was close. That's why I was like, okay, I'm pretty much done. Oh, I lie. I have one more thing to do, which I'll answer this question, then I can do it. So it says, a lot of people ask me, this is like, I got this question like 10 times over, was which eyeliner products do you use? And I use Tarte's Tartiest Double Take Eyeliner. And it looks like this. Boop, boop. So it's double ended. They have, um, this is the crayon one, which I used to whenever I was younger. It's so funny to think about now. I only used to wear eyeliner on my bottom waterline down here. And um, that's what you would use it for. Or if you want a tight line up here, which I don't like doing. But the end of that I use is the blunt end right here because it is the felt tipped liquid part that and it's very precise if i will say that eyeliner it's a thing that you have to practice at and you have to get used to the motions to be able to do it well and even i mess up my eyeliner all the time if i'm wearing thick eyeliner it's because i messed it up and I have to make the line thicker um but i will suggest there used to be i believe it was called fabu liner and if i can find it i'll pop it up right here and I got it from Walgreens and it was like $2.99 and it was felt tip and it was pretty amazing and that was like exclusively what I would buy until I discovered this one which is just a little bit blacker and it dries a little bit faster and I like it the formula a little bit better so this is what I use I'm gonna continue doing my eye makeup because I thought I was done but I am not okay so crazy but now I'm going to go in with this very purple color right here you can see it better yeah, I'm going in with this one. It's called Meet the Rents, and I'm going to use, I don't know what kind of brush this is. I don't know why I'm acting like I do. I'm gonna tap it in there, and then I'm gonna pretty much shake off as much as I can. Next question is, I love the intro song to your podcast. Thank you very much. Did you create that yourself? Absolutely not. I am not that talented. Um, I believe my intro song and also like the harp song that we use to transition from spoiler free to spoiler, they're from Pond5, but also another good website. And yeah, you have to buy them. You have to buy like the license for the song. And um, those are pretty cheap. It was like $3, $5, and then you can just use it. Or Epidemic Sound. Epidemic Sound has like sound effects and it also has like songs like if you're a person to include to include like background music on your youtube videos or in your podcast a lot of people do do background music for the podcast and epidemic sound they have so much they have so 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 much okay so emily reads asks what is your all-time favorite um comfort read devil in winter i read that one a lot but um also i really love Love in the Afternoon by Lisa Kleypas. Um, that one's just such a beautiful romance. I love Beatrice. I love Christopher Phelan. It starts off where they're writing letters to each other. She becomes kind of like an accidental pen pal to him, but um, she's also claiming to be someone that she is not because of reasons. You should just go read the book to find out. I love that one. It's it's comforting. When I think of comfort reads, I think of that one. I just think that their romance is beautiful. Also, I really love Torn by Karen Cole. It is an age gap romance. It is taboo because 
the pairing is between a, she starts off as 17 years old, then she turns 18, and it's her best friend's dad. But it is one of the most beautiful romances, and I love it, and I will stand by it forever and ever, always, and I just love it. Um, a particular side changeling one, I love Branded by Fire, Play of Passion, which is Drew and Riley's books, but I also really love Kiss of Snow another age gap romance can you tell and i do have an age gap question coming up somewhere someone asked me because they know me um the deal by l kennedy i love that one for new adult sports romance him by serena bowen one of my favorite books of all time and also bittersweet by serena bowen as well serena bowen's another one of those authors where i'm like she has a lot of my favorite books and like i feel bad for continuing to mention the same authors but it's like I like what I like. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Uh, another popular question is, what are you getting your degree in? So I actually already have a degree. I graduated college in 2015. I have to think about that. And I graduated in business and I've been a bookkeeper ever since then. And even before that, whenever I was actually in college, but then I decided I wanted to do a career change. And it's so funny because I was like looking at do people go back to just like completely change their career? Am I insane? And I decided to um, go for nursing. So now I am currently, I have been accepted into a nursing program. And the reason why I didn't mention it a lot, I was just like vague, I was in school, was because this nursing program that I was applying to, which is local and would be just easier for me all around, they only accept 40 people per year, not per semester, per year. And I was like, more than 200 people apply for this program. And if I don't get in, like, I don't want to jinx myself, I was accepted to the program. I still have to like go through a bunch of other hoops to like firmly be accepted, but I was accepted. So I'm excited about it. And that's why my YouTube content is so sparse because I'm still currently doing stuff. Even though the spring semester is over, I'm still doing stuff now that I was accepted. So, yep, that's what I'm doing. Career change, where's my fluffy thing? Okay, so right now I'm taking this brush and it looks like it has product on it, but it doesn't. I haven't used it in this video. And it's because I specifically use this very fluffy brush to go over my eyeshadow just to blend everything in. Like I just did that darker color like right in my crease and I just like to blend the shit out of my eyeshadow. So I use this, no product actually on it. It's just for blending purposes, but Okay, so is it Ravioli Reads? Love that. Says, favorite gravel scenes in historical romance. And I have a little bit of a rant about it because I can't really say like, oh, I have favorite gravel scenes because I don't particularly love gravel scenes. I'm not saying that I don't love books with gravel scenes because somebody's gonna be like, but this is your favorite romance and it has a gravel scene. But when I'm thinking about romances, my favorite parts of the books aren't gravel scenes because it means that the characters have fucked up in some way. One of the characters has done something bad and they need to ask for forgiveness or apologize or do a grand gesture. I also hate over the top grand gesture scenes, so this could be a reason why, but unpopular opinion, the grovel scene is not the thing that makes me go weak in the knees. It does not, it's not the thing that makes me swoon. It's just not what I'm actually looking for because most of the time, if there needs to be a grovel, like I said, a character fucked up. And a lot of times it's because of a misunderstanding. And one of my pet peeves was easily solved misunderstandings being like the big third act conflict in the novel. I've talked about this in other videos as well. I'm not a huge fan of books putting a third act conflict when it doesn't feel like this third act conflict was built to in a great way, if it doesn't enhance the story, if it feels like it's just put there because it's because the author is like, oh, romance books usually have a third act conflict, so I need a third act conflict. Does your story require a third act conflict? If it does not, don't put one in just to say you have one. So big rant saying, I don't really have a favorite gravel scene. I did think about it really hard and picked one where I was like, well, this was good. So Eloisa James's When Beauty Tames the Beast, that was a good gravel scene because he pushes her away and he finds out that she is sick and he is a doctor. And when he discovers that she has scarlet fever, he finds her and she's in a bad state and he has a limp and he has to take care of her. And it is agonizing for him because he has to like carry, carry buckets of water up these stairs. He can't use his cane. It's like kind of torture for him. 
and I wanted him to be a little bit tortured at this point, but I thought it was really great. It was just so lovely, the things that he was confessing while he was taking care of her. I also really love sick bed scenes in general, so that probably tipped it over the edge for me being like a gravel scene because it's a sick bed scene and that's what I like. So yeah, that's my answer. Alrighty. Oh, Ollie thought we were going somewhere. No, we're not. It's okay. Goodbye. Good, good, go to sleep. Good boy. Oh, I can't pet you right now. <laughs> nope, lay down. Okay, one more thing for eyeshadow and then I will be doing my eyeliner. Spooniest Historical Romance Heroes. I'm going back into that other Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette and I'm going to be using some of the sparkly ones because this is my favorite part about this palette. The sparkly eyeshadows are so smooth. I love them. They're just the best and you can see that I use them a lot. Right now I'm going to be using the color Faint right here, right here. I'm gonna be using this color. I'm going to be putting it on my finger and putting it all over my lid. Um, so the Swooniest Historical Romance Heroes, St. Vincent, Tom Severin, Tom Severin from Chasing Cassandra. Loved him. And I also really loved, I didn't really talk about this book, but I also really loved Michael from When He Was Wicked by Julia Quinn. I thought that he was so spoony. The way that he loved Francesca was just beautiful and yeah, those are my spooniest heroes. There are other heroes that made me swoon, but I'm trying to like move it along. Favorite possessive protective heroes in historical romance. I love Kev Maripin from Lisa Kleypas. Oh my god. Kev is amazing. He is pushing his heroine away when because he thinks that he's too brutish for somebody as delicate as she is and she has to prove no I'm not delicate and I want you you big brute and he's so protective over her and he definitely gets jealous and possessive Harry Rutledge he's a villainous character because his heroine is thinks she's in love with somebody else and Harry Rutledge sees Poppy is like ah I want her and he kind of does some underhanded things to have her and he's very possessive and yeah. Their marriage isn't off to a great start, but I love the way that it ends up. And Wes Ravenel, this man, this man is so good. Wes is amazing. He, he, he's an amazing, spoony, possessive hero. All right, now that my lids are sparkly and I'm, oh no, no, one more. Okay, one more thing for my eyeshadow. If I do fairly dark, eyeshadow looks which to me to me this is considered dark because I don't like to go too dark on my eyes because it'll take me five times longer if I want to go darker than this because I will blend the shit out of it you get the drill but if I do go darker on my eyes I like to um, do some eyeshadow underneath my eyes as well to kind of like balance that out so I'm going to be taking I'm gonna be taking a precision brush see how it's like angled and I'm gonna dip in to the um, pinky palette and just kind of get a mid color pink in there. Maybe like a more cool tone one as well. And I'm going to go underneath my lash line, my bottom lash line. I felt like Ollie's watching me. He's like, what are you doing? Okay, now on to the eyeliner, which I probably can't answer questions while I'm doing eyeliner. To be honest, it's gonna be boring because I'm just gonna be like staring at myself in the mirror trying to do my eyeliner. Sunia's Paranormal Heroes. Mad Rogan from the Hidden Legacy series by Alona Andrews. Bones from the Cat and Bone series. It's not called the Cat and Bone series. It's called the Night Hunter series, but it's the Cat and Bone series by Janine Frost. Cathal from Air to Seven Waters by Juliette Marier. It's historical fantasy with heavy romance elements, and um, you don't really get sex scenes in those books, but he's still fucking swoony and he's possessive. An Ox from Wolf Song by TJ Klune. I love him. I love him so much. Okay, I don't know if I can like watch myself do that in the camera, but I'll try to get a little bit closer so you guys can see me do my eyeliner. I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to angle it for you guys to see, but I'll try. I'll try my hardest. 
and I'm not gonna be answering questions at this time because eyeliner is a very delicate procedure. So I do like to get, the reason why I like the felt tip eyeliners is because I like wings. I like to do wings on my eyes. I like that lift that it gets. Like it makes me my eyes look more awake. And I just kind of like lay it down at the angle that I want it. I said like five times. I want to go to the tip of my eyebrow. That's the angle that I'm looking for. So this is my process to try to stay as close to my lash line as possible. Minimal movements because the more you move your arm the more chances that you're gonna mess that shit up. So Hopefully I'm explaining that right because I'm gonna go quiet now Okay, I hope you were able to see that. <laughs> so I try to stay as close as I can to my lash line. I do tend to go over it and I kind of color in because my eye, my eyelashes get really dusty from all the eyeshadow that I do. So I try to color that in because sometimes the mascara doesn't like cover it up at the end. So that's all I'm gonna do is just kind of go back in and really, I'm coloring in the eyelashes, not even the like skin um, on there. Cause I like it to be pretty darn dark. Okay, I'm gonna do the second side and just kind of cut that out because that's a lot of quiet moments in here and it makes me uncomfortable to edit that. Okay, so I actually like this side better and it's a little bit thinner and I usually extend my wing a little bit, but this one's a little bit thicker so I'm gonna have to make it match. So I'll make it just a tad bit thicker. And I'm done. So here's my eyeliner without mascara. I'm using a wipe because my hands get old. That's one thing I didn't say. When I'm doing my eyeliner, my pinky rests on my cheek a lot to keep my hands steady and from not shaking. So whenever I'm doing like this, my pinky is legit poking and it's just something that I unconsciously do, but it keeps my hands steady whenever I'm going like this. It just does, it's like, it helps me pivot. I don't know. Okay, next question. And if you have noticed, I have not even gotten to the book recommendation portion of this questions now because a lot of questions. This is from Crystal. Crystal, get on me with this question. Tell us about your worst and best first date you've had. So I have yet to have my best first date. Um, honestly, I mean, I've had some good dates. I've had some good dates, they're fine. But I don't have like a magical special first date story that was like, oh my God, this was over the top romantic. This is how all first dates should be. I don't have that. If I had a significant other, like Crystal does, the love of her life, maybe I would have a good first date story, but I have a bad first date story. And I guess I'll tell it while I do my mascara. But um, this was actually whenever I was in college for the first time. And uh, I had this guy in one of my classes and he was very flirty. He was, um, he was an extrovert unlike myself, which honestly, it's what I need. I need somebody to bring me out of my comfort zone. Also, I'm using the Maybelline Sky High Mascara. My sister, usually for years and years and years, the only mascara that I ever used was L'Oreal Voluminous Mascara in Black is Black. But then my sister bought this for me. She's like, you have to try this out. And I really love it. So that's what I'm using. So this guy asked me on a date, and um, I decided since I did not know him from Sam and every other guy that I've liked previously has kind of been within my friend group or somebody that we met, we all hung out with each other and then I started liking them and like I got to know them and stuff. Anyway, so I was just like, well, we have to go on campus somewhere. 
um, so that I feel comfortable and we went like to the library it has like a coffee shop in it and so we went there and it was good it was fine um, and that like wasn't the worst first date part of it the thing was this this lasted forever one thing to know about people who are introverts is that I can totally function in social situations but if it's with new people then my tolerance for extended conversation is very low which means I can converse with somebody that I don't know and I can come off like an extrovert if I have to and be fine but it's only like a short-term situation um, if I have to stand there and talk for a long time I will start getting quieter and quieter so the conversation is going and then all of a sudden I'll just be like mm-hmm mm-hmm yeah yeah no mm -mm. and all of a sudden I'll start getting quiet so for this kind of first date situation I'm like okay we had our first date now I need to go back regroup process and we can reconvene but this guy did not want the date to end and he started walking to me walking me to my next class and I was just like but I need my alone time now and the thing is the more I get to know a person the less alone time I need <laughs> does that make sense the more comfortable I am the more that I feel like I know you I don't need that recharge period but this guy who I barely had started to know at the beginning of the semester, he was like wanting to be around me all the time. And I don't like that in the beginning at all in dating situations. So he walked me to my next class and then he was just like wanting to meet up after that class again. And you can see how the story went. So to me, that was my worst first date experience because also it made it very awkward in class, in the class that I actually had with him, whenever I decided that he was too much to handle for me, he wasn't taking my cues and backing off a little bit, so it was very awkward in class, and I hated, hated that I had to be pretty direct and just be like, look, it's not working out, no. And that was that, so that was my worst first date experience. And maybe it was just kinda like, oh my god, you're being so dramatic but for me I've talked about having social anxiety and stuff that's just the type of thing that bothers me which is why I'm not with anybody right now can you tell for me it's definitely better to be super upfront with how my personality works and just being like look I need more space in the beginning than anything <laughs> Which is crazy because it's like everyone has like everyone talks about like the honeymoon period where you first it's like oh I want to be around this person all the time I'm the opposite I'm like I gotta ease into that I gotta I can't I don't just get to that point I gotta really ease into it more than the average person I thought that this video was gonna be shorter than the first one I did and it's not this is just gonna be a really long video and I'm sorry about that <laughs> so now I'm going to do the bottom lashes um, and I just go pretty lightly on the bottom I don't like too much because I have fairly long lashes on the bottom you can't really see them but I don't like it to be too spidery on the bottom I just like a little bit color to balance out the intense blackness of the top so just very lightly okay so that is it for my mascara. All I really have left to do is my lipstick and then I will just be doing the questions from now on, which will make things faster, honestly, instead of like multitasking, doing the makeup and the questions, which is kind of hard to juggle. Next is how do you get out of a reading rut? You have to reread an old favorite. And if you're not a rereader, it's a little bit harder for me to make that suggestion because I love rereading books. Um, so I definitely suggest rereading something that you really, really love. My battery's gonna die. I'm gonna change that real quick and then come back and answer this question. Okay, I'm back <laughs> with fresh battery. So I'm going to take a makeup wipe and wipe my lips because I get a lot of foundation on my lips. I don't know how other people don't do this. Like I feel like I get so much foundation. And once I wipe it out, I feel like wipe it off. I feel like it's pretty a dramatic reveal because since I'm so white, I feel like my lips look pretty dark on their own just without any lipstick but I always wipe it off because I don't like that pale 
foundation look. So for the reading rut question, not only if you're not a rereader, I would suggest switching up genres. If you're reading contemporary, new adult, whatever, go in the opposite direction. Read a historical romance, read a paranormal romance, an urban fantasy, whatever. Just switch up whatever you're currently reading. Try to read the opposite of what you're currently reading and not loving. That's my best suggestion. Okay, so for my lips, I pretty much do the same lips all the time. Um, every time somebody asks me what lipstick I'm wearing, I'm probably wearing these. They're all very similar colors, I know. Pretty on brand for that. I like similar color looking things. Um, but these are the Bare Minerals Matte Liquid Lipsticks and they're not like, they're not the type of lip, liquid lipstick that if you touch your lips, like nothing comes off. They're more like a classic tube lipstick, like the, the feel of it and like you can touch your lips and it comes off. And I like that. And they're the best formula for me and I just really love them. Um, currently my favorite, so this is my favorite lip gloss, which is Sugar. I really like that one. This one is, oh yeah, this is my new favorite swag. This is the one that I'm wearing um, in the summer because it's a little bit paler than Boss, which Boss is, a lot of people are always like, what are you wearing? And it's Boss. I'm wearing Boss all the time with Sugar on top. But I feel like it's just a little bit darker and so I'll probably save that whenever we go back to the winter months. And then I have Forbidden and I'm actually missing, is Forbidden the lip gloss or is it the, oh no, Forbidden's the actual liquid lipstick. I have Infamous is the gloss, the other gloss that I use but it's lighter than sugar. I do have other lipsticks in here. I have a lot of matte, MAC lipsticks as well. Um, if I'm wearing a really red, like bright red lipstick, it is the Lime Crime Velvet Lipstick. That's what I usually wear. Or if it's really dark, I just got this one this year and this one is called Red Rose and it's a little bit darker. I'm trying to think, is there like another color that gets frequently commented on? I got the sample, it's the Kat Von D Liquid Lipstick in Mother and it's pretty pink. Hello. I'm like so bad with like focusing stuff, but this is Mother and it's pretty pink and I really like it and I've worn it in a couple videos and people always ask me what I'm wearing. A lot of my lip liners, because they're cheaper, are NYX lip liners. Like I have that one to match the really pink one. Um, so I have a lot of NYX lip liners, but honestly, I use the same lip liner for almost all my, my lip looks, especially if I'm wearing like the Bare Minerals ones. And that is the MAC Pencil and Soar. I always wear this one. Okay, after using the makeup wipe, my lips tend to be a little bit dry, but I don't put my chapstick on to moisturize my lips or my, my lip moisturizer or whatever. I don't put that on yet before I do my lip liner because I feel like honestly it doesn't give me the most precise line if I put moisturizer on my lips or chapstick on before I do my lip liner. So I'm gonna do that first, then I'm gonna do my chapstick and then I'm gonna do my liquid lip. So the next question is, do you um, allow guests on your show? And I'm assuming this question is podcast related. It wasn't really specified and no. We don't. We've had one guest before, but honestly, I like routine. I like doing the same thing over and over again. I'm not very adventurous. You'll often see me on other people's live shows or readathons and not doing one by myself because I prefer to not be in charge of something that I don't do very often. If I did more of them, I'd be more comfortable doing them. But it's just to take that leap and the same principle applies to guests on the show. It's just a different schedule to work to coordinate three people's schedule. Like Juliet, we meet in person to do the podcast and we have our routine. We meet at the same time on the same day every single week to do our podcast. And coordinating with somebody, I'm not saying it would be very difficult, but it's just something that with all the other things that I'm juggling, it's not something that I want to juggle right now. If you're in a different time zone or whatever, making sure that the audio quality still sounds good, it stresses me out because that's my anxiety talking, so. Anyway, okay, lining the lips, cannot talk. <laughs> How weird does this look on camera, I'm wondering. I guess I'll find out whenever I edit this. Now sometimes, especially whenever I'm doing a darker lip, I like to fill in my lips completely with the lip liner. But I'm not doing that. 
Then I'm just using Blistex, putting it all under, weird lip motions, whatever. And then this is Swag, this is the liquid lipstick from Bare Minerals and Swag. That's it. And then sometimes I do a lip gloss and sometimes I don't. Let's move on with these questions because I still have quite a bit left to do. And this video is gonna be so long. I'm so sorry about that. Top five book boyfriends. This is also an episode we do on the podcast plus a video that I did last year for the end of the year. And I do name my top five. I think I did 10 this past year. I'll link it. I, I have two separate lists. I have like book boyfriends of like the new books that I've read this year, just new books in general that I've read this year. But then I have like my ultimate list, like book boyfriends for the ages who have stood the test of time. And my list is Grip from the Grip series by Kennedy Ryan, Mad Rogan. Do we recognize these names? Torn Grace, Tom Severin, and Hawk Snow. Now, interestingly enough, if I expand this list past five, and I have like my honorable mentions that we do on the podcast. I was so ecstatic to see the news that Rochelle Mead's Vampire Academy was going to be developed by the creators of the Vampire Diaries television series because Dimitri Belkov was on my book boyfriend list for the longest time. I think in 2019, he's definitely on there and he might be honorable mention in the 2020 list. And he might have to come back on the list guys because um, this is where my love of age gap started probably with Rose and Dimitri and oh my god I just love him and I hope they do a good job with that TV series like ugh, I want it to be done so well so badly Okay, next question What book started your love for reading when I was little I would read like your typical like chapter books We called them chapter books because they no longer had pictures in them and it was just chapters. It was exciting It was like I'm a big girl now. I read like the Mary Kate and Ashley mysteries <laughs> Then there was like these cutesy novels, which I could not find. I was like literally searching like how do I even search this cutesy novels with like animals on the front And it was like sometimes it was like mysteries and it had like a bunny on the front or like a horse on the front or a hedgehog Whatever I used to read those but on it, the reason why I started like my love of like more adult reading and adult I say YA Juliet introduced me to Juliet Marie Wolfskin and Wolfskin was the first book that I read and I was just like Am I a reader? I really want more books at my fingertips and I started actively looking for them. I read all of Juliet's suggested books and then I started wanting to go to Books A Million, Barnes and Noble, my mom would take me and I would just browse for hours. I'm like, drop me off, go to the grocery store, come pick me back later, come pick me up later. I talked about this in like multiple videos, but rehashing it again. I found Sarah Douglas, I was heavy into like fantasy, Sarah Douglas, Tad Hamilton, into fantasy series. I love those. Light on the romance. It was there, but it wasn't wasn't like quite the focus yet. Then of course, the Twilight craze happened. Twilight, the Mortal Instrument series, still one of my favorites, honestly. And I know Cassandra Clare is a problematic author. Still one of my favorite series. Vampire Academy, I discovered them all at the same time. Whenever they all only had like two books out in the series, that was like my teenage years. That's whenever I found Nalini Singh and Sherilyn Kenyon's Dark Hunter series, Care Marie Monning's Dark Fever series, and that's how my love of reading started, those books. Okay, here is the recommendations portion of this video. Favorite age gap romances, Torn by Karen Cole. I've talked about that a couple times in this video. Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. <gasps> We're gonna do this on the podcast very soon in the month of June, so I'm really excited. It's one of my favorites, most reread book by Penelope Douglas, honestly. I still need to read, for some reason, I haven't read Misconduct. I'm pretty sure that that one's an age gap romance and I need to read that one. But it's like one of those things where I'm like, but once I read it, it's over. <laughs> so I don't wanna start it. Same thing with Punk 57. Kiss of Snow, Hawk and Sienna have a pretty big age gap. I love it, I love it. She's mature, she's able to handle him, and she's a badass. Culty, of course, by Mariana Zapata, great age gap romance. Welcome to the Dark Side by Gianna Darling, another really big age gap. All these are big age gaps because I've read romances where there's a four year age gap, but I don't really, if, if you're asking for age gap recommendations, more than likely you're looking for something that's like 
a noticeable age gap. <laughs> and then I also really love Love Hacked by Penny Reed. And this is an older woman romance. And she's like quite a few years older than Alexandra is. Beautiful, beautiful romance. It was great, so good. Next, congratulations for reaching this milestone. Thank you so much. I'm happy I discovered your podcast and channel. They're my favorite. <laughs> Y'all are so sweet. What historical books do you think people who are new to this genre should start with? I got a couple of questions related to like historical starter kits. What books do you suggest? I have the same books and it's not gonna be a surprise that Lisa Kleypas is going to be featured on here. The Hathaway series. I would start with the Hathaway series. I love the Wallflower series. Very, very good. But to me, the Hathaways are a stronger series. Personally, I would suggest Mind Till Midnight and it's amazing. Love is a Rogue by Lenora Bell. That's a more recently published book that I really feel like it's a good book to include in like starter historical romances. Just Like Heaven by Julia Quinn. If you're just starting out in historical romance, I'm not gonna recommend the Bridgerton series because how reading tastes have changed in more recent years and there's a huge de debate, not debate, but there's huge conversation around the Duke and I, we've rehashed this a bunch. So I would be more hesitant to recommend the Duke and I to people in general. Um, so I would recommend Just Like Heaven. This is a great starter Julia Quinn book and it's Friends to Lovers, which I love. And My Darling Duke by Stacey Reed. I think that this was so good. And I just realized I included two Beauty and the Beast retellings in that recommendation list, but I love My Darling Duke. Did I say Darling Beast? I love My Darling Duke by Stacey Reed, it's amazing. So next, book recommendations for Forced Proximity or Only One Bed. Um, I really love the play by L. Kennedy. They're, the Forced Proximity element is because they're, they have a class together and it's a group project situation. And I think it's like for a semester long project. It's not just like, oh, one week and we meet up, we do a presentation, that's it. They're your partner for the rest of the semester. I believe. I haven't, I've read that book once, but it's my favorite in the um, Briar U series. I really love it. Another out there sci-fi recommendation is Barbarian Mind by Ruby Dixon. I love this one so much. There is even more of a communication barrier than previously in the Ice Planet Barbarian series with this one and the Force Proximity. It's because this guy pretty much grew up in the wild. He's afraid of even his own species because he thinks that they're bad. And so it's forced proximity because he doesn't want to lose this woman that he feels like he needs to protect and he can't understand her at all. And so he keeps her with him and it's a captor captive situation, but forced proximity. <laughs> Dark Needs at Night's Edge by Crossley Cole. I love, love Naomi. She's a ghost and Conrad is kind of a vampire who's been driven to madness for reasons which you have to read the series to find out and I love it because she's a ghost in this house that's haunted and he's the only one that can see her and it's such a great forced proximity situation because she can't leave the house. The score, Dean and Allie, the reason why this is, it's not super forced proximity but she is avoiding her ex-boyfriend. She's broken up with him and she's like I mean it this time. I don't want to get back together with him. We have our ons, ons and off situations, our ups and downs, but I don't want to be at my apartment where I'm easily found because I'm, I really want to wash my hands of him. So I'm going to go to my best friend's boyfriend's house and stay over there. Dean is the only one in that house and Dean has been forbidden to touch Allie in any way and it, it was just a good time, good time. Also, I really love Hearts and Darkness by Laura Kay. We've done this on the podcast as well. It's a novella length book and it is, it's so good. They get stuck in an elevator and it's just, it's beautiful. It's such a beautiful romance. And also Storm by Carrie and Cole. They get snowed in together and they're complete strangers and he's a rock star. She is in a relationship, a relationship of convenience because she's been with this guy for so long and there's reasons why she's hanging on to this relationship when you can tell from like chapter one that Evie's relationship with her long-term boyfriend is pretty much over already. Okay, next one, mafia recommendations. Sophie Lark's Brutal Birthright series is something that I've read recently and I really, really love that series. Every single book is completely different. And Serena Ackroyd's Five Points Mob series, which a lot of people call the Filthy Facker series, that one is so good. Like those I would say are my top favorite mafia series as a whole. I also really love Cora Riley's, certain books of Cora Riley's. I love Twisted Emotions and I love Twisted Loyalties. And I'm definitely looking forward to the spinoff, the next gen spinoff. 
Okay, this is a good one. Which authors would you recommend if you like your romance mixed with humor? Now, humor is really subjective. There's tons of books out there that I've heard people say like are super funny. I'll read them and be like, well, that's not my type of humor and vice versa. I recommend humorous books and people are like, I didn't really find it funny. So it's kind of hard, but I will let you know what I think is funny. Max Monroe is definitely the author duo that I think of when it comes to humor because I feel like they are definitely the authors that are like every single book that we write, we're injecting humor, all different types of humor in there. It's like a requirement in a Max Monroe book is humor. And sometimes that works for me. Sometimes the book is like, yeah, this is so funny. And sometimes the humor doesn't land with me for Max Monroe. So she's hit or miss. They're hit or miss. Dorinda Jones's Charlie Davidson series is my type of humor. Humor. I love the humor in Dorinda Jones's series. Charlie is such a funny character. I love her interactions. I love all the characters in there. It makes it even more funny, not just Charlie. And the only reason why I don't talk about this series more often is because I dislike the way that it ended. I dislike the way that it ended, but so many of my favorite books are in that series. And then also Penny Reed, another author who I feel like you have to get that brand of humor for you to enjoy it, but I think that she's funny. Book recommendations for Marriage of Convenience. Um, also congrats, thank you so much. I'm sure that there's a lot of historicals that I could have pulled out. It's so much easier to find Marriage of Convenience in historical romances, like my favorite, Devil in Winter is a marriage of convenience. I love it where the heroine approaches the hero saying like, I need to marry and it's beautiful. I just recently read um, This Earl of Mine by Kate Bateman, which is a marriage of convenience. And it was very much similar to Shanna by Kathleen Woodowis, which is a marriage of convenience. But I love Zinni by Rebecca Weatherspoon. It's a modern day contemporary marriage of convenience. And both the, the hero and the heroine are both bisexual. I thought that, that was really interesting. I love The Marriage Effect by Carla Sorensen. I think this is the third book in her Washington Wool series. And it is the book that created the spinoff The Ward Sister series, which is currently being written right now. And there was a recent release yesterday. I'm so excited to read Forbidden, so excited. But the marriage effect is so good because the hero is taking care of his four younger sisters. He is much older than them and he's basically the father figure. So the marriage of convenience has a lot to do with that situation. And it's so good because the kids play pranks on the heroine and she plays pranks back on them and it was just, it was delightful. I love it. Grumpy Sunshine Rex. I love a grumpy sunshine pairing so much. It's also kind of like opposites attract, but like specific, they need to be grumpy. My favorite one, the one that I think of all the time is Bittersweet by Serena Bowen. Work For It by Tally Hibbert, which funnily enough has the same cover model for this book. I love it. This is an MM romance, beautiful. Focused by Carla Sorensen. That's a Grumpy Sunshine pairing. Broken Vow by Sophie Lark. And the grump is the girl in this situation. She's grumpy and he's Mr. Sunshine and jokes. Love in the Afternoon by Lisa Kleypas. I mentioned this already. She's the sunshine and he's the grump. And Chasing Cassandra too. Cassandra's like lightness and love. And Tom is like, I'm serious. I only have five emotions. Five emotion Tom. Absolutely love it. Okay, this video is like so long at this point, but I had a couple um, like pining hero rec recommendations. I did do a video on um, I love you forever, which is pining romances. So I'll link that one right here if you want recommendations for that one. There was a very specific recommendation request that I did not have any answers for. So it was scenes where one character sees the other's scars then gets super upset over it. And like I racked my brain, I was looking on Goodreads and for the life of me, I couldn't even find one specific that I could recommend. And there probably is one. And as soon as I'm done filming this video, it'll come to me and it's annoying now that I'm thinking about that that's what's gonna happen. Another recommendations request, and I've done a video on it, is fave werewolf recommendation. So I'll link that video. And then lastly, someone asked for any hidden enemy to lovers um, recommendations. I have not been gravitating toward that recently. So those aren't the ones that like stand out like a beacon when I find one. But one of my all-time favorite enemies to lovers stories is Egomaniac by Vi Keelan. And I freaking love this book so much. It's such an interesting situation, has a really funny opening scene as well. So if you haven't read that one already, I would definitely check that out. I'm also probably going to put on my glasses for my thumbnail because I feel like it's going to be so weird if I'm like, it's going to be like, who is that person? on the thumbnail 
So I'm gonna take my thumbnail after. But that concludes this video. I know that it's probably one of the longest videos I've ever done. I tried to make it shorter and thought that refilming would help and it pretty much did not. So I just got to do this video twice. But it did help that I put contacts in this time. So at least at least there's something positive to come out of refilming a very long video. If you like it, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe to get notified of any future videos that I do. Thank you so much for watching and remember, life's better with a little HEA. Bye guys. Thank you.